AST 1781, Heavenly Saber Manor, Ching Shui did not ponder any longer, as thinking about it more and more would only make him depressed. He did not even know what mindset one should have about it. Li Yan was not as carefree as she seemed. She was more mature and could feel the immense gap between herself and Ching Shui, and that was the barrier of social status. Social status was still very important in the continents, in fact, this was true anywhere and everywhere. She had once been with Ching Shui for a while and even knew that she looked like a woman he once loved, but no matter how similar they were, she was not that woman. She was very conflicted, as she realized that was the reason why they had gotten so close back then. A while later, the banquet was prepared. This world's customs were the same, if you were sitting, you might as well sitting around the dining table while drinking and chatting. However, the happy dinner was disrupted, as over a dozen people rushed in from the outside. They surrounded the inner courtyard and a voice sounded out, Soul Search, come out. Ching Shui was still holding his chopsticks as he looked at Soul Search with confusion. Soul Search explained with a bitter smile, there's a force wanting to recruit me, I just delayed them back three days ago, and yet they are already back, what an impatient lot. Ching Shui began to wrap his head around the situation, he smiled and said, that just means that older brother's medical skills have improved again, what is their background? Ching Shui said these words casually, as he did not take these people seriously. He only found it strange for people that had the balls to prey upon the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Soul Search's hospital was still the Imperial Cuisine Hall, regardless of Ching Shui's absence, this all still belonged to Soul Search. They come from the force known as the Heavenly Saber Manor, a newly rising power, I'm not too clear but they seem to be very powerful. Soul Search lightly said, with Ching Shui's presence, these matters were not even worth mentioning. Since they've come, older brother, let's go take a look. Ching Shui stood up and started walking out. Soul Search and the women followed Ching Shui out. Soul Search, three days have already passed. We hope you've thought it through, our manor head is still waiting for your reply. An impatient voice sounded out. Ching Shui and Soul Search began walking out. Ching Shui spotted the origin of the voice, it was from a middle-aged man with a sharp jaw, thin lips, and a pair of eyebrows cocked upwards. He looked heroic and suave, just a pity that the beautiful eyebrows were ruined by his slit eyes, making him look cold and dangerous. It was not surprising for people to try and recruit Soul Search, but for Ching Shui to have met them today was too much of a coincidence. Soul Search was a hot commodity, but no one was strong enough to touch him, given the Puyang clan's protection over the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Soul Search was not in a hurry to respond and the middle-aged man continued, the Puyang clan can't protect you any longer, we've already contained them in their own manner. Ching Shui did not move, as the opponents were not weak, but that was it. They were just stronger than the Puyang clan. The only scary part was, what if he wasn't here, then what would Soul Search have done? Ching Shui turned to look at the bitterly smiling Soul Search, Li Ji, and Su Yi next to him. With the Puyang clan tied down, Ching Shui knew that this would have been sufficient to force Soul Search to quietly submit. Everyone had their own weakness and once people caught on to it, they could only submissively follow others. However, Ching Shui was not blaming him, as only people with weaknesses would have emotions. Only those who were truly cold-blooded and heartless had no weaknesses. The equivalent of walking corpses. If you join us, we won't mistreat you. Becoming our heavenly saber manners doctor, especially our most valued doctor, is far more glorious than spending your life here. What other concerns would you have? That middle-aged man did not want to force him, as if he forced him and he held a grudge, even finding him to cure his illnesses in the future might lead him to die without even knowing anything. Haha, <laughs> the poacher has reached the imperial cuisine hall. Ching Shui began to laugh out loud. Originally, the people who just arrived had already seen this youth, along with the pure and untainted woman behind him who held a small child. She enticed everyone, making them jealous and thirsty. Ching Shui had already seen their thirst and wanted them to pay a heavy price for such wanton sacrilege. Who are you? What are you laughing at? The middle-aged man wrinkled his eyebrows. He looked at Ching Shui, who have arrived here while giving off a strong aura and accompanied by a goddess-like beauty. This kind of person was sure to be far from simple. I've only left for a few years, and yet Yehuang County has already forgotten me. You are Ching Shui? the Imperial Cuisine Hall's founder. The middle-aged man's eyes narrowed and gave off a sharp glint. Oh, you do recognize me. 
Ching Shui smiled. Good, good, I was just looking for you, to think you would show up right before us. The middle-aged man's voice turned cold. Looking for me, Ching Shui smiled again. The deeds you've done in Yehuang County have not been forgotten. Here he returned to his calm voice. Ching Shui was naturally unable to forget, Yehuang clan, Yelang clan, Che clan, etc., but he did not know what relations they had with this heavenly saber manner, so he asked, and what of it? It seems you are unaware that among those people, many were our heavenly saber manner subordinates. Ching Shui was indeed in the dark, it seemed like the heavenly saber manner indeed had a background, but did not reveal themselves much in the past and yet they began to rear their head now. I don't know some heavenly saber manner, I only wish for you to not disturb my friends and family or else I won't be polite. Ching Shui looked at the man coldly, truly a newborn calf without fear, you really think of yourself as some big shot. Since I've seen you here, I'll definitely bring you back to the heavenly saber manor. Soul search, have you thought it through? I've already given you many chances. The man turned towards soul search. Tianju, me and my brother move together, I have no need for your chances. Soul search shook his head lightly. Fine then, we'll bring all of them back, heavenly saber slaughter formation. With Tianju's loud cry, the surrounding experts formed a saber net, which encircled Qing Shui and the rest in its center. Qing Shui did not move, after he saw the opponents move in unison, well trained and well coordinated, he could tell that the heavenly saber manner was a force specialized in formation techniques and they had some achievements in this regard, given these people's capabilities. However, it was a pity that they had met Qing Shui, as using a formation in front of him was simply like a fool acting clever a clown in his eyes, AST 1782, dragon capturing hands, exploded with a pinch, Ching Shui calmly stared at the people surrounding him, before nonchalantly taking a step forward, with his step, Ching Shui's immense pressure swept through the air and he arrived at an awkward position, seemingly at the eye of the formation, yet it wasn't the eye of the formation, he stepped on the weak point of the formation, Ching Shui stood at that spot and looked towards the opponents, he was serenely looking over at Tianju and said, I'll give you one last chance, bring all of your men with you and leave. You guys are not enough to deal with me, there would just be pointless casualties. Tianju's face turned colder. He was a prideful person and he would never surrender in front of a youth at Qing Shui's age. He had wanted to battle him years ago. Whether we are enough or not, you'll know it when you try. Tianju looked a little crazed. Heavenly Saber Rise? Tianju shouted out. At the same time, the entire formation rose like a prehistoric ferocious beast. It had a calm, yet imposing aura. This made Ching Shui shake his head. It was quite obvious that they could not figure out the mysteries of the position he was standing at. To still launch an attack was simply courting death. If you caught a snake by its soft spot, even the most venomous and powerful snake would be powerless and they could be killed immediately. Sha, Tianju led the charge and the entire formation transformed into a large saber transferring all the momentum into Tianju. He was like the blade of the heavenly saber with an unstoppable and sharp momentum. Ching Shui finally knew that this Tianju was not a moron. He did not want to fight him in a solo combat and was using the combined strength of his allies. Ching Shui suddenly stomped on the ground and an intense surge of origin qi spreading outwards. Hong, Ching Shui's step neutralized the threat of the heavenly saber formation. As a result, many of the people were sent flying out of the formation while spraying blood all over the skies. Without the people, the aura of the heavenly saber killing formation disappeared in a flash. Charging towards Ching Shui, Tianju was like a deflated ball. The two dirks in his hands were rushing towards Ching Shui, but his efforts were akin to an arrow at the end of its flight. Ching Shui phased forwards and outstretched his palms. Dragon capturing hands? Pa? Ching Shui directly gripped Tianju's throat? Piu? Ching Shui was speechless, as the minute probability of exploding appeared. It was a pity that Tianju was the first person Ching Shui used the dragon capturing hands on and exploded. Ching Shui was not intending on directly killing him, but his character was truly garbage. With Tianju's death, panic struck the people around. He was treated as their leader and looked up as a direct descendant of the Heavenly Saber Manor, yet he was pinched to death in a single move. Tianju's strength was far from comparable to Ching Shui, even pinching him to death was not far-fetched. Ching Shui had already held back and did not expect him to be killed, but with the special effect erupting, 
the lethality multiplied exponentially and so he was killed with a single pinch. Ching Shui was also slightly shocked, but he shook his head and waved his hands to chase away the remaining rabble, leave, convey this message to your manor lord, I'll wait here for a day and he can come if he wishes. Ching Shui, Tianzhu is a direct descendant of the Heavenly Saber Manor. This matter is about to become complicated. Soul Search was still gripped with emotion, but seeing Ching Shui's unfathomable strength, he felt as if the entire Heavenly Saber Manor was inadequate as an opponent for Ching Shui. This was an instinct and it raged through him. Ching Shui was not worried about killing Tianzhu, even if he was the direct descendant of the Heavenly Saber Manor's manor head. The world prized strength above all, dying in combat was a common occurrence and after reached this level, one needed to be ready to accept death. His current strength gave him confidence that he could handle anything the Yehuang County had to offer. The Heavenly Saber Manor seemed to specialize in formations, but their strength was far from being comparable to Ching Shui's. Of course, Ching Shui and the ladies' growths were monstrous by any standard. Ching Shui was planning to stay for a day and he had even more reason to stay, given the circumstances. Li Yan looked at Ching Shui, the man who single-handedly crippled experts from the Heavenly Saber Manor. This was absolute strength and the confidence associated with it caused her heart to flutter. She did not deny being attracted to this man, but she was intelligent and despite her arrogance, she had a feeling that she would never be able to keep up with him. Customers began flooding in, while the Puyang clan came with Puyang Qing personally arrived. Puyang Qing was slightly flustered, as the Imperial Cuisine Hall was put under his watch by Qing Shui's order. So he was valuing the relationship he had cultivated with Qing Shui and also the bonds he recently forged with Soul Search. When he saw Qing Shui, he was given a shock before he erupted in joy. Old Master has returned. Qing Shui hurriedly rose and smiled as he was considered one generation below Puyang Qing, given that Puyang Zhengming was Puyang Qing's granddaughter and was to be betrothed to Qing Shui's son. Qing Shui, you've returned. This is great. This old man is truly useless, Hayes. Puyang Qing sighed. Puyang Qing's strength was not ordinary, but his long sigh was a proof that he had truly faced off against a formidable foe, one that rendered him helpless. We're family, let's not be so formal. Qing Shui pulled Puyang Qing along to sit down. Soul Search also smiled, Old Master, if not for your care for all these years, the Imperial Cuisine Hall would have been flattened long ago. Family doesn't need to be so courteous. Everything will be fine now as Qing Shui has returned. Puyang Qing was especially happy. These people held unwavering confidence in Qing Shui, which did not make him feel anything. But the others felt like there was finally a path of life amidst the dangers. If it wasn't for Qing Shui's appearance, there was no telling what would have happened. Old Master, what exactly is this heavenly saber manner? Qing Shui's curiosity towards this heavenly saber manner had begun to arise. Heavenly Saber Manor was situated on the Heavenly Saber Mountain Range, southeast from here and a blessed land. It has a long history with more than half of the members using large sabers as weapons. In the past, it was more reclusive, but recently, it had begun to become more active. Not only are they recruiting experts, but even alchemists and doctors, even my Puyang clan was invited. Puyang Qing thought as he spoke. Is the Heavenly Saber Manor also merely a victim? Qing Shui began to contemplate such thoughts. A reclusive clan that suddenly sprung into action. Qing Shui was perhaps jumping to conclusions, but it wasn't an impossibility. Since the Heavenly Saber Manor had a clear rule of never interfering with the mortal world. This was also the reason for Qing Shui's conjecture. Of course, there were also the possibilities that the rules of the Heavenly Saber Manor had changed, or that the Manor Lord had taken up the position through some unique means. These were all guesses on Qing Shui's part, but he was certain that the winds of change and chaos were about to blow in the dancing phoenix continent. AST 1783, Memories of the Past, can no longer go back. Although he was holding such thoughts, Qing Shui's mood was still relatively relaxed. People said that one who was skilled was generally bold. Only those with power wouldn't be afraid of such issues. Therefore, he felt that he could easily solve this issue without problem. Thinking of this made him feel more relaxed. This world had never been peaceful before, there would be many great battles happening around on a daily basis and it wasn't a rare sight. Where there were humans, there would be fights. In this world, there weren't just battles between humans, but also between demonic beasts and similar existences. 
The action from the Heavenly Saber Manor previously didn't come to spoil everyone's mood. They sat together to chat about rare occurrences in the world as they drank wine. However, it was only between Qing Shui, Soul Search, and Puyang Qing. Yi Yi Jianj, Li Ji, and Li Yan sat together and talked about some other topics. Old Master, has everything been well at home? Qing Shui put down his wine cup and asked, smiling. It's good. How has it been for you over these years? Puyang Qing was a little curious. He had no idea what level Qing Shui was current at. Over the years, he had also gotten a lot stronger. Back then, he had become a false god cultivator with Qing Shui's help. However, he knew that in this life, he was basically going to stop at the false god realm. Puyang Qing wasn't aware that Qing Shui was now a divinity. If he knew, he would be completely shocked. Of course, he had no idea how strong Yi Yi Jianj was either. This divine beauty looked just like an ordinary person as she carried a child. In fact, she was also a divinity. I've been in the ocean domain with Jianj all these years and haven't been able to leave since then. I only managed to free myself two days ago and rushed back home to take a look. Qing Shui also felt that he was quite lucky to be encountering such things the moment he came back. He could help to solve their problems. Qing Shui didn't reveal too much about his clan. In fact, the few ladies at home would also be able to handle the Heavenly Saber Manor, if there were no influences that were especially terrifying backing them up. You haven't had the chance to head home yet, right? Huiang Qing also felt that he was especially fortunate. Good fortune could change a person's life and many other things as well. We've just arrived. This is good too. I hope that the leader of the Heavenly Saber Manor would be able to come on that day. Otherwise, we'll head there to take a look. If he really is a person of great evils, then we'll just kill him. Otherwise, it'd continue to be a burden in our hearts. Qing Shui said after gave it some thought, as he won't leave future troubles for himself. With Tianzhu dead, even if the head of the Heavenly Saber Manor doesn't come, other people would. It doesn't matter who would come. As long as they dare to come and create trouble, I'll make them stay here forever. After the meal, Qing Shui said to Li Yan, Miss Yan Er, let me help you with the treatment. Qing Shui had promised her earlier. All right. Sister Jianj, I'll be heading over first. Li Yan smiled and said to Yi Yi Jianj, Go on. Treating injuries are more important. Yi Yi Jianj nodded. Qing Shui realized that he was a little agitated to be alone with Li Yan. It should be agitation, one that was hidden deep in one's heart. In his previous life, there had been nothing between them and they didn't become a couple. They had their own lives and Qing Shui also had his own difficulties. However, there was an inextinguishable feeling in his heart. Even till now, he would still occasionally think about it. Sometimes, he would even wonder if Li Yan's appearance this time was so that he could come the regret in his heart. Sir. Qing Shui was woken up by Li Yan. She was puzzled by Qing Shui, as he had been staring at her in a daze. She didn't understand why he would look at her with such a gaze. It was a gaze filled with yearning, regret, love, and something she couldn't put into words. You're thinking about her again? Seems like I really look a lot like her then. Li Yan smiled softly and said. Almost exactly the same, even in terms of character and voice. Qing Shui didn't deny and shook his head, smiling bitterly. You love her a lot. Li Yan said softly. I do, I love her a lot. It has been several decades but I still can't forget about her. The two of us aren't lovers. I like her a lot, but I don't even know if she likes me. Qing Shui shook his head and said bitterly. It was until now that he could say the words that had been buried in his heart. She was the first girl whom Qing Shui had truly fallen in love with. Although their relationship wasn't the closest, she was the most unique one and he would be willing to give up many girls for her sake. Li Yan was stunned. She found it hard to imagine that the girl whom he liked, was the one he had a one-sided love with. Moreover, that girl was exactly like herself. She left you, Li Yan said softly. She left me forever. In fact, Qing Shui was the one who had left, he had left to another world. However, he couldn't say this and could only put things this way. He had been given another life and the memories. The beautiful memories from the past were something he could no longer return to. Have you been treating me like her? Li Yan asked curiously. When I see you, I'd only be reminded of her. But you are you and I won't treat you as her. Qing Shui shook his head and said smiling. Thank you. If you really were to treat me as her, I would have to hide from you in the future. Li Yan smiled and her crescent-shaped eyes looked very beautiful. 
Ching Shui was moved. It was a familiar feeling, it was linked with the purest memories which he had in the past. Ching Shui then applied acupuncture for Li Yan. During the acupuncture treatment, he had done it through her clothes. Her injured meridian channels were treated very quickly and were in a better condition than before they were hurt. Ching Shui and Li Yan walked out together. The treatment hasn't taken a very long time and when they came out, a few more people had arrived. One of them was an exquisite looking girl. Ching Shui guessed that this girl who was about 12 or 13 years old was Puyang Zhengming. It had been a very long time since they last met. The little lass was now at the height of Ching Shui's chest. Girls went through puberty at a younger age and Puyang Zhengming now already had a slender figure. Her exquisite features made her appear very intelligent and her pair of big eyes seemed as if they could talk. There was a hint of coldness in them but they were gleaming with intelligence, giving off the feeling that she was a very clever person. Come lass, do you still remember your uncle Ching Shui? Puyang Ching said to the lass. Uncle. Puyang Zhengming walked up next to Puyang Ching and then smiled as she called Ching Shui. Her voice was crisp and her actions were graceful and very earnest. Zhengming has already grown up so much. I haven't prepared anything for you. Take this as a present. I'll make it up for you in the future. Ching Shui handed a copy of the Free Spirit Steps and Solitary Rapid Fist to the lass. He could tell the lass aptitude and she wasn't suitable to learn the ghostly steps. The solitary rapid fist was a good complementary skill to the free spirit steps and at a later time, she could practice it with the swords. If she could really get together with Ching Long, it wouldn't be bad either. Thank you, uncle. The lass thanked him with grace and smile, revealing two faint dimples. Unknowingly, it had turned dark and the Li clan had already headed back. Ching Shui and Yi Yi Jianzh were going to stay, while they waited for the people from the Heavenly Saber Manor to come the next day. They could only head back home after the matters here were settled. Although they were still very far from the Qing clan, he could still arrive very quickly if he were to use the Nine Continents steps. However, Qing Shui was afraid that something would happen if he were to leave. After all, he had killed Tianzhu. AST 1784, Happiness Needs to be Shared. Huge hand imprint. Puyang Qing stayed behind too and even brought along some people when he came. These people also stayed behind. Ching Shui, Puyang Qing, and Soul Search chatted as they sipped on the tea in the living room. Ching Shui, I heard the news that the Heavenly Saber Manor's head seems to have already surpassed the existence of a false god cultivator. Puyang Qing looked at Ching Shui and said slowly. Ching Shui now understood why Puyang Qing had been frowning all this time. From the beginning, Ching Shui knew that he had something bothering him. However, Ching Shui had confidence in himself and thus did not ask anything. Puyang Ching was still very worried about Ching Shui. After giving it a lot of thought, he still decided to talk to Ching Shui about it. That means that he's likely to be a divinity. Ching Shui's expression remained calm. He had encountered quite a number of divinities in the North Sea, in the depths of the Hahen continent and in the ocean domain one would be able to come into contact with early divine grade cultivators. However, it was still the same principle. If one wasn't strong enough, they wouldn't come into contact with these group of people. The other party wouldn't care to have any interactions as they would be on a different level. Just like how an adult wouldn't fight or quarrel with a kindergarten child. The things which they fought for, were different and there were no clashes of interest. The other party wouldn't have the spare time for this either. Ching Shui wasn't surprised. He hadn't encountered any divinities in the dancing phoenix continent. There were very few false god cultivators as well and they were all early false god cultivators. Despite cultivated for so many years, Puyang Ching had only reached grade 2 false god. After experiencing one false god tribulation, he felt that it would be very hard for him to have any more breakthroughs. Him being a divinity is only a possibility. He's probably a high grade false god or peak grade false god. The chances of him being a divinity is far too low, Puyang Ching said seriously. Puyang Ching's abilities had cast a restriction over his views. To him, divinities were existences which he could not come into contact with. Therefore, after so much guesswork, he still felt that the opponent would be a peak false god. In fact, even Ching Shui felt that the possibility of a divinity appearing here was very, very low. When Ching Shui returned to the room, Ching Xiu had already fallen asleep and Yi Yi Jianzh was drawing something. She didn't even lift her head when Ching Shui came in and only said softly, you're back. Ching Shui gave an answer and looked at Yi Yi Jianzh, who was bending over slightly and drawing at the long table. 
That untainted aura she radiated and her focused expression was far too mesmerizing. Ching Shui saw that Yi Jianzhi was drawing him and already in the final phase of her work. Many of his women were proficient in music, chess, literature, and painting. Of course, in terms of drawing, they were still no match for Ching Shui. He already surpassed normal levels. Yi Yijianj's drawing ability was definitely top-notch. It made Ching Shui feel that she should have reached the level of drawing bones, bringing out the charm right down from the bones. Such a level wasn't achieved through drawing out the bone structures. The drawn character gave the feeling that they didn't exist on paper and was very lifelike. To the extent that they had bone structures supporting them. Ordinary drawings were just drawings and no matter how realistic they were drawn, they still gave off the feeling that they existed only on the paper. Only drawings that gave off the feeling that the characters were alive, would be considered to surpass the ordinary level of proficiency in drawing. Yi Yi Jianzhi was drawing while Ching Shui was admiring his woman, waiting until Yi Yi Jianzhi put down her brush. Yi Yi Jianzhi lifted her head to see that Ching Shui has been looking at her all this time. Even though they were husband and wife and even have a child, she was still a little embarrassed and threw him an annoyed glance. You've already been looking for so many years. Is it still not enough? No matter how long I look at you, it'd never be enough. Ching Shui smiled and went over, wrapping his hands around her slender waist. By the time I've become an old and white-haired granny, I wonder if you'll still look at me. Yi Yi Jianj smiled and said, No matter how much you change, you'll still be the image I have of you in my heart. It'd never change. The passing time will only make me even more infatuated with you. Ching Shui smiled and said calmly. It was nothing pretentious nor did he show any attitude. It was very normal but gave off an indescribable feeling of reliability. Yi Yi Jianj's smile was even wider and she pointed to the painting on the table. Take a look at it. I've improved. Ching Shui nodded, you're already at the level of drawing bones. Ching Shui felt a sense of achievement just from looking at this drawing. He was the one being drawn and it had been drawn personally by Yi Yi Jianj. Even if a person had a high-level mastery of drawing, to draw someone to this degree, they would still need to put in a lot of thought to this person. It must be from the heart, or else it would be impossible to draw something like this. His achievement wasn't that Yi Yi Jianj could draw this well, but that a lady who was like a goddess liked him. She was his woman. The next day, Ching Shui woke up very early as well. He faced the morning sun and practiced an hour of fist techniques, he was feeling refreshed after training. After living in the ocean for several years, Ching Shui still felt that it was better on land. He had the Paragon water shield and could move like a fish in the water, but it was just the feeling, the slightest feeling. He still enjoyed the land and that was a feeling that burned deep into his bones. After breakfast, it was already late in the morning. Ching Shui hoped that the other party would come earlier. He was still in a hurry to head home. Having been away for so long made Ching Shui couldn't wait to go home immediately. Kinship held the greatest spot in Ching Shui's heart. It was the harbor to his heart and soul. It was only with family would one have a home, allowing him to feel that he wasn't a floating plank, but that he was rooted and had a goal. There would be people with whom he could share his emotions. Happiness needed to be shared. Otherwise, no matter how great one's achievements were, no matter how great a life they led, they wouldn't feel happy. Ning. Just as Ching Shui was feeling a little impatient, he lifted his head and looked into the distance. It was a series of black dots, accompanied by crisp cries. They were here. Ching Shui felt very happy. He wasn't afraid that they would come, but rather afraid that they wouldn't. He hoped that there would be people who could carry some weight amongst these people. Right now, he didn't have the time to waste with them. Other than Yi Yi Jianj, the others didn't feel relaxed at all. The Heavenly Saber Manor kept a very high profile and their reputation in Yehuang country was also very high. Moreover, the Heavenly Saber Manor showed signs of becoming even more powerful. Right now, the Puyang clan was also considered one of the top-notch clans. However, even a clan like them wouldn't be able to show any signs of resistance before the Heavenly Saber Manor. It showed how powerful the latter was. Right now, many clans had lowered their heads. Before absolute power, it wasn't embarrassing to lower one's head. Since it was the same for everyone, then it wouldn't be embarrassing. Moreover, compared to having their clans annihilated, being embarrassed was nothing. They were near. Ching Shui could now see them clearly. There were close to a hundred of them and they came flying down. They were now less than 300 meters away and still showed no signs of coming to a stop. 
Ching Shui had yet to take a closer look at these people. Since he didn't know them, he didn't take a look at them right at the very start. However, he suddenly waved his hand and slapped out toward the sky. A huge hand imprint formed in the sky and this hand imprint slapped out toward the closely packed group of people. The great aura caused most people's countenance to change drastically and many of them were stunned. However, there were people who instinctively put out their hands in defense. There were also some people who rapidly left the spot they were in previously, not even caring for their own rides. AST 1785, Phoenix Dance Amalgamations Phoenix God Organization. Boom. Ning. A huge sound rang out and powerful origin chi scattered out in all direction. Smoke and dust filled up the place. There was fog formed in the atmosphere and agonizing cries coming from the beast rides. With a big palm imprint, the area in the center of the group was completely destroyed. Although not many of them were hurt, they were all rendered in a pathetic state. Earlier on, with just a glance, Ching Shui got an estimation of their abilities and thus he knew that his attack could reach this effect. Astonishing impact. This was what he was striving for. He wanted his opponents to know that they were weak and useless before him and in the future, if they wished to deal with him, they should remember the scene today. Although most of the people darted away in a pathetic state, there were also quite a number of them who were injured. There were also a number of them who had light injuries. All of them turned pale as they looked at this young man in great disbelief. However, there were also a few people who didn't move in the slightest the powerful chi force didn't astonish them and right now, they were also looking at Ching Shui with a grim countenance. Ching Shui looked at the few people who were perfectly fine. Two of them looked like elderly people wearing black robes that were embroidered with a sharp saber. There were also two men who appeared to be middle-aged. The middle-aged man in the middle appeared refined, had a tall and slender figure with broad shoulders. His upright figure wouldn't lose out to any young men. Time hadn't left much traces on his mature face and his eyes were bright yet filled with determination and dignity. It wasn't that Ching Shui didn't want to hurt them, but he knew that if he did, there would definitely be a lot of people losing their lives. Ching Shui didn't want to kill. It wasn't because he was showing them pity, but he wanted to see if these people would persist to the very end. Do you need me to request for you guys to come down again? Ching Shui smiled as he looked at the remaining few people in the air. That earlier strike had already brought down quite a large number of them and only a few of them still remained standing in the air. Ching Shui didn't like to look at people while raising his head. He smiled coldly and disdainfully toward the people who were up there. Why are you going against our heavenly saber manner? That refined middle-aged man didn't come down but merely asked as he lowered his head and looked at Ching Shui and the others. Ching Shui didn't say a word and struck out once again. This time around, it was with an impact that was several times stronger than before. Boom, the ground shook and the mountains trembled. Now, not a single person remained in the air. Ching Shui looked at the huge crater before him, where the few people were at and said, how does it feel? For one to put up a front, they needed to be strong. Otherwise, it would just be a joke. The few men's faces instantly changed, with most of them feeling anxious. Offending strong experts and their dignities would easily cause them their deaths. Earlier on, their actions were already considered as an offense and he had all the right to kill them. The more they thought about it, the more afraid they were. They remained standing in the huge crater, even forgetting about getting out. Speak up. Who are you guys in the Heavenly Saber Manor? If the head of the Heavenly Saber Manor isn't here, then you guys can just commit suicide. Ching Shui now felt a little more at ease. I'm the head of the Heavenly Saber Manor. These few people are the custodians. Mr. Ching, may I ask why you've called for me? That refined middle-aged man lowered his attitude and said, while bowing slightly. Ching Shui was satisfied with their performance. However, when he heard what this man said, he frowned. With just these few words alone, he could tell that this refined man wasn't anyone good. Moreover, it wasn't strange for them to know who he was. The people who had left previously should have already told him. Do you really not know why I've asked you to come? Ching Shui said. He was displeased. His expression turned cold. Sigh, Mr. Ching should know that our heavenly saber manner don't involve ourselves with the matter of this world. We're also forced to do something like this. To ensure that our sect isn't wiped out, I can only follow the orders of someone else. The heavenly saber manner's head sighed and said helplessly. Ching Shui kept his eyes on the head of the heavenly saber manner, especially on his expression and what he was feeling when he spoke. 
Ching Shui felt the helplessness the man felt when he was saying this. You're at peak grade false god, being only one step away from the divine grade. Why are you following someone's orders? Ching Shui felt curious. Who was the one behind all of this? While Ching Shui asked, his thoughts were already moving. Right now, his women were all at the dancing Phoenix continent and although the place was a little further from here, it was hard to say if only the dancing Phoenix continent was affected by this. I only know that this organization is known as the Phoenix God Organization. I don't know anything else. What they want to do is to bring together the powers of the entire dancing Phoenix continent, so that they can go up against the other continents in the future. The head of the Heavenly Saber Manor shook his head. What position are you in this Phoenix God Organization? Ching Shui continued to ask. I'm only one of the 100 sects under the Phoenix God Organization and acting on their instructions. The head of the Heavenly Saber Manor looked at Ching Shui, as if he had thought of something. Mr. Ching, there'll probably be someone looking for you very soon. My level isn't high enough. The man continued to say, oh. Hearing this, Ching Shui felt less worried. He had heard before that there was going to be a grand war of the nine continents and when the time came, all nine continents would be involved. It seemed like this had turned out to be true and there were already signs of this happening. It wasn't that there were signs showing that such a thing would be happening, only that he was already strong enough to come into contact with things of this level. Not everyone would be involved in the battle. It would only be amongst the top-level warriors and should be something that had always been ongoing. It was only now that Ching Shui came into contact with it. With his current powers, they probably won't raise their hands against his friends or family. At the very least, before they deal with him they wouldn't be so foolish. It's actually not a bad thing to join this Phoenix God organization. The name of your sect or clan won't change and you won't have to do anything for most of the time. The organization is very lively and you'll be able to come into contact with many people. It's a good opportunity and you'll also receive good resources. Of course, the benefits aren't for free. You must do things for the Phoenix God organization and must also listen to their commands in periods of emergency. This was normal. You'll receive the benefits based on how much you put in. Since that was the case, Ching Shui felt that this was an easy thing to settle. He looked at the Heavenly Saber Manor's head and said, How are we going to deal with the matters today? How does Mr. Ching wants to settle this? Have you thought of entering the Phoenix Heart? The man asked carefully. Forget it, you guys can go back. I don't wish to be disturbed. You should understand what I'm saying. Ching Shui gave it some thought and waved his hand, saying, Sir, I'm very sure that someone would come to look for you very soon. I'll listen to you and leave right away. I've been abrupt today and don't worry, I won't come and disturb you anymore. The man said politely. Those with power were revered. This was normal. There were two groups of people in the world of martial arts. The first type would be those who were headstrong and would never stoop to flattery or bow down toward others. Although these people were tough, they could be easily broken as well. Those who could allow themselves to fawn on others would easily stop in their own progress. Of course, there were always exceptions. One's character determined their way of cultivation. There were countless paths that led to the peak of martial arts. Ching Shui couldn't say how this man was, but on his second big palm imprint, this man showed no signs of great hatred, not in the least. This was why Ching Shui had agreed to let them off. Everything was attributed to the differences in their abilities, just like how it was for jealousy. When the gap between the two people was too big, there won't be any jealousy. There would only be admiration. AST 1786, returning home after many years. The head of the Heavenly Saber Manor left. Ching Shui felt that he should be leaving as well. The other party should know what to do. However, it was just like what the Heavenly Saber Manor's head had said there would probably be someone who would come to look for Ching Shui. It should be an even more powerful existence in the Phoenix God organization. Old master, brother, we'll take our leave first. Ching Shui had a strong yearning to head back. After all, he hadn't gone back for many years. To the current Ching Shui, returning home would take just an instant. Be careful on your way. Ching Shui and Yi Yi Jian brought along Ching Shu, waved their hands, and disappeared from the side of Soul Search and the others. Old master, I wonder if we'll be able to overcome this safely. Soul Search looked at the direction in which Ching Shui had disappeared in and said hesitantly, Haha, there's no need to worry. When the sky collapsed, the tall people would support it up. 
The Phoenix God organization's goal is the dancing Phoenix continent and they aren't the only organization there. Moreover, Ching Shui's current abilities are already unfathomable. Did you notice? He appeared very relaxed even when talking about divinities. He wasn't even a little surprised. Huang Ching now appeared very relaxed and said happily, Old Master is saying that Ching Shui is also at the divine grade. Soul Search said agitatedly, That heavenly saber manner's head should be at peak false god, but he seemed to show no resistance against Ching Shui. It can only say that Ching Shui is at least a divinity. Soul Search had an indescribable feeling. It was a feeling an ordinary person in Ching Shui's previous life would have, when his elder brother turns out to be a mayor or something. The impact was similar or could be even greater. This is really unbelievable. Ching Shui is already a divinity at such a young age. Soul Search chuckled, feeling a little light in the head. Nine continents steps. When Ching Shui came to a stop once again, they were already very, very close to home. They changed to the Golden Dragon and flew towards Qing Clan. When they were several tens of lis away, Qing Shui kept the Golden Dragon, took Yi Yi Jianj and carried Qing Xiu as they flew toward home. The prosperous city was still filled with busy traffic. Over so many years, the development hadn't been fast nor were there any obvious changes. After all, when the material prosperity reached a certain level, the progress would slow down. The closer they were to home, the more nostalgic Qing Shui felt. He was worried if there had been any recent occurrences to the family. Although he already knew that nothing had happened, he still had a great yearning to go home and take a look. When the guard at the door saw Ching Shui, he was first stunned and then pleasantly shouted, Mr. Ching is back. This guard had also been found by Ching Shui. They were indebted to Ching Shui and served the Ching clan diligently. Is everything all right at home? Ching Shui smiled and nodded. Everything's fine. With this short delay, other people in the family saw Ching Shui and all of them came out immediately. After all, it had been many years since Ching Shui had come back. A period of seven to eight years was considered quite long. Father. A familiar voice rang out and a girl came pouncing over. Las Yu. Yi Yi Jianj took the child from Ching Shui's hand and Ching Shui called out to the girl as he hugged her. Ching Yu was now grown up and looked quite like Huayun Lu Li with a hint of eccentricity. She turned toward Yi Yi Jianj. Auntie, you've become even more beautiful. You're still as cheeky as ever. You're already grown up. Time passes by really quickly. Yi Yi Jianj reached out her hand to pat Ching Yu on the head. This little guy is really good looking. Let me carry him. Ching Yu didn't continue to hug Ching Shui. After all, all of the others had come out by now and were already here. When Ching Shui saw Ching Yi, he quickly walked over. Mother, have you been well? When Ching Shui saw his mother, he felt especially happy. The many years hadn't left much traces on his mother's face. It was still like how it was before. This meant that she had been doing quite well for the past few years. Ching Shui heaved a sigh of relief. Mother has been well. It's really great that you're back. I'll get someone to inform your father and get him to come home earlier. When Ching Yi saw Ching Shui, she was very agitated. There's no hurry. This time around, I'll be staying home for a bit longer to spend some time with you. Ching Shui said happily, It's fine as long as everything is well for you. Your children have all grown up. As their father, you should have a good chat with them. Ching Yi said happily, while pointing to her grandchildren who were at the side. Ching Zun, Ching Yin, and Ching Ming have now grown a lot more and appeared more mature than before. This time around, their changes had been tremendous, especially for Ching Zun and Ching Ming. Ching Zun gave off the feeling of being a warm and handsome young man. He exuded a warm smile along with a powerful yang and righteous aura. Ching Shui wasn't surprised. Ching Zun had a powerful nature energy in him. He had progressed steadily to reach peak martial saint. With a quick glance, Ching Shui could tell their cultivation level. Ching Shui neither felt that Ching Zun's progress was fast nor slow. It wasn't necessarily a good thing for one to progress too quickly. Of course, if one's state and foundation could keep up, then it would be a different story. However, this was hard to achieve and one would need to take his time to ensure that everything went well. Ching Zun's abilities were very stable and this was due to his nature energy. His righteous power was very powerful and both of his state and foundation were more stable and powerful than his cultivation level. Ching Shui nodded and pat Ching Zun on the shoulder, not bad. I'm still a far cry from how father had been. Ching Zun smiled. His eyes were filled with admiration for his father. 
Every father is a hero in their children's heart. The difference between cultivation level is not something absolute. There are many cases where a person could kill someone of a higher cultivation level. Keep your mind in a steady state. Don't get lost in blindly striving to get to a higher cultivation level. Ching Shui said softly, I'll remember father's teachings. Ching Shui pet Ching Zun on the shoulder again then smiled and looked at Ching Yin. This daughter had grown into a great beauty with a mild and graceful aura. Her calmness was something that even Ching Zun couldn't compare against. Father. Ching Yin wrapped her arms around Ching Shui's neck happily. She sniffled a little and tears were about to fall from her eyes. Ching Shui hugged her, you're already grown up and it's time to find a husband. Why are you still such a crybaby? I'm not going to look for a husband. Is father planning to throw me out? Ching Yin lifted her head and looked at Ching Shui. Ching Shui was stumped and shook his head. All right, we'll do as you say. The guys here are really not a match for our Yin ER. We'll see how it goes when we meet someone suitable. Ching Yin smiled and nodded. Ching Yin was currently a grade 10 martial saint and would reach peak martial saint very soon. However, Ching Yin was the type who didn't like to compete with the others and surprisingly, the prowess of her battle techniques was even stronger. This might be a balance, as her speed and endurance were also especially strong. When Ching Shui saw Ching Ming, he was still taken aback. This kid now seemed like a shadow even when he just stood there. It was just a feeling as there were no sounds or aura coming from him. Moreover, his underworld king energy seemed to have become a lot stronger than before. Ching Shui had no idea if this was good or bad news. However, Ching Shui failed to detect any hidden dangers. He only felt that the underworld king energy seemed to be a little domineering. AST 1787, Ching Shui's Women and Children Father Ching Ming smiled and called out. Not bad. You're reached a bottleneck now, but as long as you can break through it, you'll enjoy a long period of rapid and smooth sailing progressing thereafter. Ching Shui pat him on the shoulder. When Ching Shui came back the last time, he had helped them. The strongest Ching Zun and a few others were only at early martial saint. However, they were now at peak martial saint and would soon attain a breakthrough to the martial emperor level. Yen Er. Ching Shui took his daughter's hand. This lass had grown up into a lady as well. She was a quiet girl of few words and her aptitude weren't bad. However, she wasn't considered any kind of rare talent. She didn't like to fight and gave off a quiet feeling, as if she wasn't that interested in anything at all. This was the daughter which Ching Shui worried the most for. It was because seeing her would make one feel a little heavy-hearted, as if feeling that she wasn't happy. Father. Ching Yin smiled and called out to Ching Shui. She was smiling and it was a smile that came right from her heart. She was truly happy to be able to see Ching Shui. However, there still seemed to be a hint of worry on her face. Our lass has also grown up now. Tell father, do you have anyone you like? Ching Shui wasn't just asking casually. He wanted to see how this daughter of his would react. Ching Yin was stunned for a moment before she blushed and quickly shook her head, no, no. Ching Shui was surprised to see how obvious his daughter's reaction was. She was grown up and her reaction caused Ching Shui to be stumped. He had no idea if she was blushing because she felt shy or if he had hit the bullseye. All right, all right, if you say there's none, then there's none. But if there's really someone, you must definitely tell me, all right? I'll help to give you some advice. Your father likes whoever you choose. All right. Ching Shui knew that no matter what the truth was, he mustn't ask any further. MMM, thank you father. Come, this is for you. Ching Shui took out a few brushes, a zither, as well as some exquisite drawing paper. Ching Shui had specially prepared these items. When he knew that he was coming back, he had prepared some gifts for them in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal. Father, I want them too. You can't be biased. Ching Yu reached out her hands. Oh, is our UER able to draw as well? Ching Shui brought out some more as he spoke. Of course he had prepared some for Ching Yin and the others as well. However, if they didn't like drawing, then he won't have anything else for them. There was also Ching Yun, Yun Duan's, and Ching Shui's daughter. She had quite little interaction with Ching Shui and he had given her very little impression of him. It was still the same now. Ching Yun had grown up as well. Regardless what personalities these children have, they all held their father in great admiration. Their mothers had told them a lot about their father. He was a legend, a powerful existence. Later on, father will teach you a set of cloud steps that's suitable for you. 
What do you think? When Qing Shui sensed the aura coming from his daughter, he suddenly thought of this. The cloud steps had evolved from the nine palace steps and was something which Qing Shui hadn't been using. It could also be called the nine palace steps, one that was for females. Therefore, Qing Shui planned to teach this to the children. It was because in comparison, the cloud steps was a slightly simple but it still held a great essence. If one reached a high level of proficiency in the cloud steps in the future, they could change it into the, the complicated nine palace steps that had an even greater effect than the current nine palace steps. All right. Qing Shui pat her head and then squat down. Jun Er, did you miss father? I did, a lot. Qing Jun spoke using ventriloquism. Qing Jun was the daughter who Yehuang Guo had adopted. She was born to be unable to speak but Qing Shui now had the ability to cure her. Qing Shui's five element forces and cultivation were very powerful. He could also use his force of rebirth and life and death needles to heal her now. This time around, father will be able to treat you and let you speak with your mouth. Qing Shui smiled and said, I'm already used to it. It's fine like this. Qing Jun gave it some thought and said, I want to hear you use your voice to call me father. Qing Shui rubbed her head. When he squat down, he would need to raise his head to be able to speak to Qing Jun. Qing Tang, Qing Niu, Qing Long. After having not seen him for a few years, Qing Long now looked very different. His figure was more slender, appeared less headstrong, and his pair of bright eyes made him appear quite handsome. He was over 10 years old and had changed a lot. With Su Qing's and his own genes, how ugly could their child be? It was just that when he was younger, he didn't appear as exquisite looking as the others. Luan Luan and Ya Cheng weren't at home. Yahuang Guo had previously said that they were at the Lotus sect. Di Chen, Di Qing, Hai Dong Qing, and Wenren Wushuang were all considered members of the Lotus sect and would spend most of their time there. His women had split up into different groups, not so that they could pit against each other, but that they were each doing their own things. In Qing Shui's previous life, this would be considered their career. Kang Hai Minjiao, Huoyun Lu Li, Yun Duan, Zhu Qing, Minjiao Jilo, and Shi Qing Zhuang had their own trade association. It had now developed quite well and was considered one of the biggest trade association in the area. Yu Ruyin, Tan Tai Xian were at the Puchuo Mountain, but they would come to the Qing clan a few times each year. Yahuang Guo stayed behind to watch over the Qing clan while Yu En So watched over the Imperial Cuisine Hall. Yu He and Miu Qing were at the Hundred Flowers Valley. The eldest princess, Qing Xia, and Yan Jinyu were at the Heaven Secrets Academy, and their reputation there were soaring. Tan Tai Linjian and Qin Qing should be at the Demon Lord Palace. Yi Yi Jianj, Muyun Kinga, Luo Qing Cheng, and Qing Hen Yi managed the Sunset Sea King Palace. Thinking of this, Qing Shui realized that he already had quite a number of women. Right now, only Yehuang Guo and Yuan Su were at home. The ladies who managed the trade association would come back more often. Although they might not be able to return every day, they would stay for a day every two to three days. Now that Qing Shui was back, they had to be informed to come back. There were also other members of the Qing clan, including Qing Bei, Qing Yu, Qing Hui, Qing Hu, Qing Ziai, and many others, who helped out with the management of the trade association. Qing Shui's children were more free to do as they wished, but they spent more time back at home. Yahuang Guo would guide them in their cultivation. After all, she was the strongest. Qing Shui hugged Yahuang Guo. He did the same for Yuan Su as well. Although he had yet to won over this lady, she was destined to be his. Therefore, he showed some skinship very naturally. Moreover, everyone in Qing clan had already treated her as Qing Shui's woman, and all of his children called her auntie. Her name in the imperial cuisine hall was also well known. Everyone knew her as the miraculous physician goddess. Qing Shui felt that he was the happiest person. With a wife like this, what more could a husband ask for? Moreover, he didn't only had one wife. Yahuang Guo stood next to Yi Jianj and was talking with Qing Yi and the others. When Yahuang Guo and Yi Jianj stood next to each other, one of them appeared ethereal while the other intoxicating. This gave Qing Shui an atrocious thought of wanting to bring them both onto the same bed. The first one to return were Huoyun Lu Li, Shi Qing Zhuang, Minjiao Jilo, Zhu Qing, and Kang Hai Minjiao. Their appearance made Qing Shui a little agitated. Having not seen them for so many years, that feeling was indescribable. Qing Shui. Huoyun Lu Li pounced into Qing Shui's arms. AST 1788, Blissful Family, Successful Career. 
Ching Shui looked at this charming lady. Many years had passed and yet the time hadn't left a single trace on her face. Back at the southern city, he had almost lost this lady. She was also a lady who would give up her life for him. The scene where he had met her in the Hundred Mile City, the cauldron that he was using for alchemy, all the way till they had found his family. There had been many things that happened between them. I thought that you don't want us anymore. Come, quick, give him a hug. We haven't had a chance to hug him for so many years. Don't you want a hug? Minjiao, come over here. Huoyun Luli grinned and left Ching Shui, pushing Kang Hai Minjiao into his arms. Ching Shui hugged Kang Hai Minjiao, this poised and dignified lady while looking at Huoyun Luli, who was like a demoness. She was still like her usual self. Ching Shui liked this slightly crafty lady. However, there were still other people after all and Kang Hai Minjiao's face flushed a little. She lifted her head and smiled, looking at Ching Shui, you're back. MMMM, I missed you. Did you miss me? Ching Shui said so softly that others won't be able to hear him. I did. Kang Hai Minjiao replied softly. If it was back in Ching Shui's previous life, Kang Hai Minjiao would definitely be someone treated as a goddess. When Ching Shui first met her, she was on a golden wing thunder condor, while emitting an unapproachable and pure aura. He never thought that there would be a day where she would become his. Now, he had over 20 children and unknowingly, so many years have passed. Ching Zhuang. Ching Shui hugged this lady who didn't look as cold as she used to be. She was his first woman and was also the one he had gotten to know first. He knew her since he was still at the Qing village. Are you still going to leave after coming back this time around? Shi Qing Zhuang smiled softly. She was just asking, but she knew that there was no way Qing Shui would be able to stop. Right now, he wouldn't be able to get himself out of the things he were involved in. You can't bear to part with me. Qing Shui looked at this cold beauty. Her beauty was cold and rich, yet also had a hint of courage. She wore a blood red night attire and Qing Shui would never get sick of looking at her. That's right. Shi Qing Zhuang smiled, replying to him. I'll be staying for a bit longer this time around. I'll definitely satisfy you, all right. Qing Shui said teasingly. When the two of them spoke, it was in a very soft voice that other people would not be able to hear them. Qing Shui was capable of such a feat at his cultivation level. Shi Qing Zhuang turned flushed red. She knew what Qing Shui was meant to say when he looked at her with that ambiguous gaze. Feeling shy, she pushed him away and went off to talk to Yi Yi Jianj. Qing Shui took Zhu Qing's hand. This docile yet mature lady was considered the shortest out of all his other women. However, she still had a height of over 1.6 meters. Despite her height, she had a proportional figure and was well embodied. Her mature and intoxicating charm was especially attractive. Ching Shui had changed her entire life and now she was a mother of one. She found a sense of belonging in Ching clan and she was very happy. Seeing his women happy made Ching Shui feel at bliss. Leave the door unlocked for me tonight. Ching Shui smiled and said. I'll wait for you, no matter how late you are. Zhu Qing's beautiful gaze gleamed with a great seductive charm. Do an ER. Ching Shui called out softly. Yun Duan hugged Ching Shui tightly. After separated for several years, she had missed him a lot. She was a lady with a lot of reservations, but now, she also hugged Ching Shui very naturally. Ching Shui's and Yun Duan's first encounter was very dramatic. Back then, Yun Duan had been sacrificed and ended up having sex with Ching Shui. Ching Shui was her first man. However, many things happened later on, which caused Ching Shui to give up on her. Still, he hadn't expected that after many years, he would meet her once again and found out about everything. Yun Duan's family and their destiny were also changed after meeting Ching Shui. Otherwise, she wouldn't know how things would end up. Yun Duan was very satisfied with her current life. She now had a man whom she liked and who liked her, had a cute daughter and also was involved in the trade association. If it was in Ching Shui's previous life, she would be considered to have both a great career and a blissful family life. Ching Shui then took Min Jilo's hand. This poised and sacredly beautiful lady had a hint of demonic charm. Her pure-looking features with that blood-red mark on her forehead exuded a lethal demonic beauty. Back then, she had carried Ya Chang around to look for a physician and fortunately, came across Ching Shui. Otherwise, Ya Chang would have lost her life and she herself would go crazy. Ya Chang wasn't Ching Shui's actual child, but he treated her even better than one would to their own child. Moreover, he also didn't harbor any other thoughts just because he wasn't Minjiajilo's first man. 
A lady's character would become even more refined after experiencing some difficulties and would be able to treasure the life even more. Of course, it wasn't that Ching Shui did not mind about her past, but he could only blame himself for not meeting her earlier and thus she had to be put through those turmoils. Ching Shui also went to see his grandfather, uncle, aunt, and other family members. Ching Ziai was the only one from the third generation who was around along with Ching Changfeng as well. He was now at the early martial saint level. He was a far cry from Ching Zhen and Ching Ming, but was also quite outstanding. He could even be called a genius, Ching clan's genius. Ching Shui was an exception and shouldn't be taken in comparison. The same went for his women. One large contributing factor to his powerful children was his women's aptitude. Of course, Ching Shui's talent wasn't considered bad either. How bad could his nine yin golden body be? Although the others were informed of his return, they would still take several days before they arrived. They would be coming back consecutively over the next few days. However, Ching Shui felt that it would be better for him to bring them back himself. Thinking of this, Ching Shui told the rest not to inform them. He'd go and bring all of them back over the next two days. It was still early and everyone chatted in the biggest hall, talking about the things that had happened over the past few years. At the start, they got Ching Shui to tell them about his journeys over the past few years. Ching Yi carried Ching Xiu, her youngest grandchild. Yi Yi Jianj's elder brother and child were around as well. Yi Yi Tong had now grown up and the young man who went out to hunt wild beasts back then had now transformed. He now had muscular arms and a thin waist, appearing very capable and had a determined character. His aptitude wasn't bad and when he saw Yi Yi Jianj, he awkwardly called her aunt. Yi Yi Jianj patted his head, you're still as shy as when you were young. This is from your uncle. Yi Yi Jianj brought out the sword which Ching Shui had prepared for Yi Yi Tong. It was quite a good sword and although it was neither of the false god or legendary grade, it was something which one wouldn't be able to get in the market. After all, it was only one step away from being a legendary grade weapon. The material used was 10,000 year recovery and some other precious materials. Just the materials alone were very precious and even more so was Ching Shui's forging skills. Legendary grade weapons were things in the legend that 99% of cultivators would never live to see. As for divine artifacts, they tended to only be possessed by those who were destined to have them. Yi Yi Tong looked at the longsword in Yi Yi Jianj's hand that was gleaming with a violet glow. His eyes lit up and he asked, It's really for me. You little fool. Would Ant lie to you? Yi Yi Jianj placed it in his hands. Ant is really good. Help me thank uncle. Yi Yi Tang grinned. Why are you standing on ceremony? There's no need to thank me. Just focus on your cultivation. Ching Shui smiled and said to Yi Yi Tong, AST 1789, Trifle, Temporary Relaxation. Because of Ching Shui's strength, even if he wasn't home that often, there was the aura he emanated. It made others respect him. It was early now and there was still a lot of time before noon. In the main hall, Ching Shui took out the numerous gifts for all the people in the Qing clan. This was a habit as well as a hobby of his. The things that Ching Shui gave to his elders were perfume-related things. This world also had perfume, which was something that women loved. Each of Ching Shui's women had their own perfumes, but would still use something lighter, which was a type of habit. All of these were handmade by Ching Shui in the realm. The ingredients grown in the realm of the Violet Jade Immortal were much better than the ones outside, although they couldn't be mass-produced, it was still enough for his own people. Ching Shui also never thought of using perfume to make money. He wasn't short on money now and didn't think that there was really anything that he could spend his money on. Now that his family had its own business, money was no longer a problem. Normal families would look at wealth, if they were rich they would be well regarded, but Ching Shui had left that circle a long time ago. Money didn't matter to the Ching family now, as long as there was enough to spend they were satisfied. Ching Shui thought of the powerful clans from before, the ones that held power, even now those families were very rich and with their status, money didn't seem to matter much. Ching Shui didn't understand, but he had a feeling that his own family's philosophy wasn't too different. Right now, the Qing clan didn't use a lot of money, nor did they want to earn that much. The most important thing was their strength, the collective strength of the clan and the strength of their descendants. Watching the child in front of her, she felt very fulfilled. Ching Yi saw the few women along with their children and there were still others that hadn't come, so many heirs. Ching Yi didn't even know what she was feeling. 
She only had Ching Shui, but he had many children of his own, so she had many grandchildren. If Ching Shui wanted to look into it he would find out that his father, Yen's Hong was traveling back and forth between the Soaring Dragon Continent and the Dancing Phoenix Continent. It seemed that he stayed on each continent for about three months. He loved Ching Yi, but he couldn't just leave the Soaring Dragon Continent. There was no one at fault here, it was nature itself. Ching Yi didn't really need anything. She knew that Yin's Hong had to be there to do important things. The Great Yin Dynasty needed him, so Ching Yi normally encouraged Yin's Hong to stay there. Yin's Hong knew that in this life he would most likely have to move at the drop of a hat, but luckily the Great Yin Dynasty didn't always need him there. Despite all the years lost and his busy schedules of moving between the Qing clan and the Great Yin Dynasty, he was very happy. Qing Shui also had a puzzled feeling. His eldest children, Qing Zun and Qing Yin were almost 30 years old, just a few years short, but if it were like before they would have graduated from college. Unknowingly, Qing Shui had already been in this world for a few decades. He was already a 50-year-old man, even Qing Shui wasn't sure of his exact age. That had been forgotten long ago. This was a rule of this world. Once a strong martial artist had gotten into the realm of the martial saint, they wouldn't pay attention to their age. At this stage, their life was increased by a lot. The Xientian had a lifespan of 500 years, whereas the martial saints had almost a 1,000 years lifespan. At first Qing Shui wanted to cultivate to this stage because of the lifespan, so he racked his brains trying to find a way to create the Xientian golden pellet in order to increase the lifespan of his elders. If Qing Yi wasn't a Xientian martial artist, she would look like an old woman at this stage, but now her essence was strong. Her youthfulness was preserved and wasn't looking very different than when Qing Shui was young. His grandfather was the same, but when he reached the Xientian rank he was already an old person so he could not go back to being young. He kept his old appearance, but he no longer grew older. But Ching Shui felt that many years had passed. He was no longer satisfied with the Xientian realm of his mother and grandfather. He wanted them to be martial saints. He wanted his family to be with him for much longer. So now he was thinking on how to make anyone, that couldn't reach the paragon level, to get to martial saint. He knew it was hard, very hard, because until now he hadn't heard of any pills that could directly enhance a martial artist to that level. There was nothing hard in the world, just people without resolution. Ching Shui believed in that phrase. He needed to destroy the shackles around his mind. Even if he didn't have the power to do that now, all he needed was time. As long as there was time, there was hope. He wasn't sure whether his strength was equal to the second grade divine warrior, but it shouldn't be too far off. To have 100 Dao Force was enough to be in the Divine Realm and Qing Shui had almost reached 140,000 Dao Force. He didn't really feel much. At the moment he couldn't find anyone who could explain this to him. 100 Dao Force and 10,000 Dao Force were also the strength of the Divine Realm, because of this, Qing Shui didn't know what to feel. The difference between the two ranks was like heaven and earth. Everyone was able to receive Qing Shui's gift, most of them were pellets or weapons. But of course, there were some martial techniques as well. Besides, Qing Shui also distributed all the things he was able to create outside, like the Nine Revolution Golden Pellet and the Fortune Golden Pellet. After a while, noon was approaching and the entire family was sitting together. It was very busy. It had been many years and Qing Shui was very happy with the atmosphere at the moment. It had happened before, but now everyone was around him and he had become the pillar of the house. After lunch, Ching Shui went to bring back other people. He thought about going to the Lotus Sect since Di Chen, Di Qing, Hai Dong Qing, Wenren Wushuang, Qing Bei, Luan Luan, and Ya Cheng were all there. These women had split into many different locations, which was enough to make Ching Shui run around for a while. The strength of the few women had already been established in the Dancing Phoenix Continent, the Lotus Sect, the Hundred Flowers Sect, Heaven Secrets Academy, and Puchuo Mountain. The allies of the Qing clan also included the Demon Lord Palace. It was just that Qing Shui didn't know whether the Demon Lord Palace counted as one. Even though he had been with Tantai Linjian for so many years, he didn't know what was this impressive woman doing now. Although Qing Shui knew the Demon Lord blood in Tantai Linjian had already been removed, he was a little worried about their relationship. As it was said, he must strike the metal while it was hot. When he thought about this, it made him feel a little helpless. He arrived at the Lotus Sect. He saw an ordinary land in front of him. 
It was a ravine with the traces of people and Ching Shui felt that it had improved from before. On the walls of the giant ravine, many caves could be found. Even many small courtyards, which were intricate but not without presence. There weren't many of them, but they were much more obvious than the caves on the side. Ching Shui hadn't even arrived, but he could already feel them. While he was looking around at the various courtyards, he was filled with a familiar feeling. AST 1790, Embodiment of the Beautiful Night, Swaying Magnificence. Ching Shui's spiritual sense and smell had greatly exceeded other people. Using this, he could go close to the women without them finding out. His continuously changing shape quickly approached the courtyard. As he came close, Ching Shui already saw a familiar shadow. He felt two familiar smells and at then he saw one of the women come out. A woman with grace and richness came over. She held her head high and her neck straight. Her long body was nimble and clever, while her undulating ridges and peaks would place people into reverie. Her mature and rich face was accentuated by her wise and beautiful eyes. Her skin was white and meticulous, along with her slim and tender waist. A well-rounded butt could be seen pointing up in a perfectly rounded arc. Lastly, her flowing dress perfectly accentuated her amazing figure. Hi Dong Ching, she still dressed like this after all these years. Ching Shui watched the approaching woman, then he appeared behind her in the blink of an eye and immediately picked her up. Ah, it's taking forever to find. But before he finished, her hands were about to shoot out to kill the person who snuck up on her but then she smelled a familiar smell and saw the man who just appeared in her eyesight. This was the man whom she yearned for day and night. Ching Shui. Pow. Ching Shui slapped that well-rounded butt. This feeling was really good. He smiled at her. You weren't happy that your husband came to see you, so you decided to assassinate him. I was wrong. Please forgive me this time, Master Ching. Hai Dong Ching looked at Ching Shui shamefully, her eyes only filled with joy. When he saw Hai Dongqing's expression he was a little sorry. What his woman was asking for wasn't too much. As long as he came every now and then, she would be satisfied, but even this simple thing seemed to be hard to do in practice. Then you'll have to be on top tonight as punishment, Ching Shui looked at Hai Dongqing with a smile. Hai Dongqing's charming eyes were clear like the water, a sort of indulgence showed through her shy expression, I wouldn't be scared of that. The passion of before called out another person, Di Ching who lit up when she saw Ching Shui. She couldn't believe it and then she happily ran over, as quick as a martial artist could. Hai Dongqing wanted to come out of Ching Shui's embrace, but Ching Shui didn't let her go. At the same time, he extended his arm to hug Di Ching. In the end, both of them were in his embrace. My Ching. Last night I had a dream with you in it and today you are really here, Di Ching said happily. What was I doing in your dream, Ching Shui said playfully. Di Qing's face turned red unexpectedly. She was yearning for him day and night. Of course, a dream that was involving him would have some degree of heat. It was only natural. In addition, whenever Ching Shui was around he'd do at least something with her, but with so many women if he was tired he would just let them alone in their room. Bad stuff. Where are they? Ching Shui didn't catch Di Chen and Wenren Wushuang's smell. They went to deal with some stuff for the Lotus sect, they should be back quickly, Hai Dongqing said. It's still going to take a while for them, why don't we wait in the room, Ching Shui said this lightly, then saw the faces of the two women turning red. The true meaning of Ching Shui's words was all too obvious. The two women's faces were both red, but what stunned Ching Shui being that neither of them stopped him, so he took their silence as acceptance. Ching Shui was very moved by this. He had many women but hadn't slept with them for a while. Surprisingly, he has never tried a threesome with them. Ching Shui was a traditionalist but that didn't mean that he didn't want to. Even in his previous life, he had seen a few X-rated films. It starred a single actor with multiple women. Ching Shui wouldn't want to escape situations like that. According to his knowledge, he always felt that sleeping with two women at the same time was a little disrespectful to them and every single one of his women was at the goddess level. He actually didn't have the guts to say anything not because he was lacking in courage but because there was shame in his heart. But as his strength rose, his bond with his women grew deeper. Although the fun in the bedroom wasn't everything, that was still an extension of the love. Just like the saying, if you want to say that you love someone, you have to show that you love them. The manifestation of the intimacy between a man and a woman was physical love. It didn't matter how lofty a relationship was, if a couple didn't have physical love it wouldn't be complete. 
Ching Shui's eyes were filled with heat and after picking up the two women, he went into a room in the blink of an eye. Ching Shui, what if they come? Hai Dong Ching said quietly. She wasn't rejecting the idea. She was just afraid of being disturbed. I'll be quick, Ching Shui didn't want to waste this opportunity. Di Ching and Dong Ching were both brave women in comparison. The two women were embarrassed but also weren't objecting. As it was said, when women were braver than the men, it was even scarier. Even if Ching Shui were to abandon his urges now, he calculated that the two women wouldn't. Naturally, Ching Shui wouldn't say much at this time. He immediately closed the door to the bedroom. Although he didn't know whose bedroom it was, through the smell he determined that it was Di Ching's since it smelled just like her. Ching Shui was very excited now. He just didn't know what to do. He carried both of the women onto the bed, but both of them were so embarrassed that they didn't move. They didn't want to embrace Ching Shui with that type of enthusiasm alone. This put Ching Shui in an awkward spot. Ching Shui kissed Hai Dong King's red lips but his hands were exploring all over Di Ching's body. Dong Ching, I'll remember what you said earlier, Ching Shui said dubiously. Obviously, he didn't know what to do either. He had to do the weight lifting alone and took care both of their needs. Although Hai Dong Ching was embarrassed, she also felt Ching Shui's awkwardness. Since loving a person required thinking in that person's shoes, ridiculing him in this situation wouldn't be nice. While biting her teeth, Hai Dongqing took the initiative to remove her clothes. Hai Dongqing straddled over Ching Shui's body like a beautiful knight. Her movements were like a peach blossom tree that rocked the entire world, Ching Shui's world. Ching Shui was still kissing Di Ching. His pair of hands moved through her well-rounded white flesh and while he was exploring those white mountain peaks, Everything was imprinted in Ching Shui's mind. While he was looking at the movement of the white peaks, Ching Shui felt a strong urge. In the excitement, he lifted up his upper body and kissed that bright red peak. Perhaps, it was because he had been gone for too long and Ching Shui also didn't have any plans to settle down. The two women simply lay in his bosom. Ching Shui had no control, at last everything entered Hai Dongqing's body. The two women didn't lay there for that long, after a while, they exchanged glances and with red faces rushed into the bathroom. Ching Shui looked at this situation with a nostalgic expression. That fulfillment wasn't only on his body, but he felt it even more in his consciousness, much more in his consciousness.